Here, uh, someone says they are curious about the symbol of the cross in general, and specifically of the St. Thomas cross. We see the cross is an ancient symbol. The original Christian cross was the Egyptian cross, the Ankh. It is a cross. Really, what you see basically is uh, a vertical line, then a horizontal line, and above it should be a circle. Now, the Ankh, uh, to look more artistic and more appealing, you get an oval. But in reality, it should be a circle. The Egyptian symbol of the soul was a perfect circle with wings on each side. The idea being that the spirit flies through the tunnel of eternity or the hallways of eternity under its own power, under its, its wings. You see, the, the, the perfect circle does not occur in nature. Therefore, it's an ideal symbol of the spirit, which is outside nature. It's never material, and it's never really a part of relative existence. Therefore, it's a symbol of true consciousness, of the authentic self, and Placed in that way, it means the transcendence of duality. And also, since there's a vertical line of anything that supports it, it needs no support. So for it, there's no up and down and there's no left and right or back and forth, whichever way you would want to put it. But the Christians adopted it because it was understood to be a symbol of life and of renewing life. And life, spiritual life, was the essence of even the very death of Christ. You see, someone like Christ, of course, they can never die, neither can you or I. But everything about them is of life. Therefore, not wanting to just show a diagram of a crucifixion cross which the Romans loved to nail people to and kill them and torture them to death. The Christians used the Ankh. By the way, you might be interested to know that no one could be a Christian bishop in those early days who could not hear. And if you see the, the, bishops, the bishop's staff in the West is just a shepherd's staff, stylized. But the real one, the one that's still used in the East, is the staff of Asclepius, the healer of the gods. And you have the shaft, and then there's a cross on top, but there are two figures, serpentine figures, that are facing the cross. So in this case, the bishop's staff represents a spine and the serpents represent the risen Kundalini. And in India, in the St. Thomas Christian Church, the bishop's staff usually has cobras with their, with their hoods raised on, on either side. So uh, when a bishop in Egypt, went to Alexandria. They first went to the great catechetical center, which was the hub of Christian activity in Alexandria, which was next door to the Serapium, dedicated to the god Serapis, who healed. And the bishop would go, and first he would go into the church there, and he would be with the people and they would have prayers, etc. And he might speak to them about spiritual subjects. Then he would go next door to the Serapium and practice healing right along with the other Egyptian healers, which shows you that the original Christianity, Christians, I'm sorry, did not think that 
people of other religions were heathens under the power of the devil and going to hell. That they were just kind of, in a great river, you have many currents. And they knew they were all in one river and there were just different currents and they could mingle. And this is, this is the way it really is. And uh, I mean, I've known St. Thomas Christians who lived in Christian ashrams that would visit Hindu ashrams, partake of the prasad, that which has been offered in the temple to the deity, and visit there with those ashramites on a completely one-to-one -one basis. They didn't see themselves as separated. They didn't see themselves as enemies in any way. This is an important thing, thing to realize. So unfortunately today, usually the so-called Christian cross is just the crucifixion cross. <laughs> They're so busy to think about Jesus dying on the cross, they figure that he, they forget that he conquered death that he underwent a horrible form of death, and let's not talk about that, it's so awful. And then he lived. So if it doesn't, if it's not the own form, it's not the cross of life, really, it's not the cross of Christ. All right, now let's talk about the St. Thomas Christian cross. Here it is, I can't, uh, I could back up maybe, but uh, all right, this is the model. So here we see, an equal, basically an equal bar cross. The artist has made this a little longer, but it's this, but it, they should be equal, which is about balance, balance energies. There is a quadrinity in uh, relative existence, and this represents the perfect balance, the perfect harmony. You have three against, they're stylized. So really there are 12. This represents the 12 signs of the zodiac. This represents uh, various things and in numerology. And there, of course there's 12 apostles, etc., etc., etc. It just means the complete picture of everything. That's it. These are decorations. They don't mean anything. What is important is this. This is the Holy Spirit descending on the cross. Saying that the cross as such in a sense of belief in Jesus, belief in his death, doesn't mean anything if it isn't made alive you see, in the prayers in the Eastern Church, the Holy Spirit is continually called the life giver. So it has to be a living entity. And the religion has to be living and you have to be in touch with the life. A man came to Sri Ramakrishna one time who'd converted to Christianity. And he said, I believe Jesus Christ is the Son of God and Savior. Sri Ramakrishna said, so what? What do you know about Jesus? He said, I've actually seen him and I've spoken with him. Sri Ramakrishna was very pleased. He smiled. He said, that's the right way. It's experiencing the living Christ, which is us. We're all Christ. Jesus is not the Christ. He is a Christ. The Christ is Ishwar. That's the Christ, the, the infinite spirit. And the finite spirits were all potentially little Christs. So therefore, the cross is uh, the way of life.